I want to formally welcome all of you to the Career Pathways 2023 program information session. I am Manuela Contreras, and I am the leadership manager here at the council, and I work with the Career Pathways program and other leadership programs here. You'll notice a few other people in our call today, as well as some other people on our staff that you've been talking to. So I want to give you a full picture of all of our council staff you may be engaging with throughout the process of applying for Career Pathways or joining our program. All right, so what are we going to do today? Today we're going to learn a little bit more about Career Pathways and understand the why behind Career Pathways, why we're here, what we're trying to accomplish with our program. We also want to show talk to you about the difference and why career pathways is different than some of the other leadership programs you may have heard about and talk about some outcomes and some roles that we like to play here and i'll dive deep into the career pathways 2023 program the format and what it will take and talk a bit about our application process All right, so let's get started. The why, the why behind Career Pathways. So as many of you have known, we've been around for many, many years, over 10 years now, and we're very grateful for this program has made such a big impact in the sector of philanthropy. And our big why and why we really started with Career Pathways is because we noticed that there was a huge lack of diversity in leadership at the C-suite level within philanthropy. And so our commitment was we wanted to bring in a leadership program that would help to create more diversity in leadership and C-suite positions so that it could reflect, so our leadership could reflect the communities that we were serving. And so we were really excited to want to bring in together a group of leaders of executive leaders leaders from marginalized identities that usually aren't represented at this level and help to amplify them, to support them, to support and connect us and bring us together. And we were really wanting to focus on bringing together a leadership program that wasn't just about creating and, and helping to support leaders, but that were all leaders that were excited about advancing equity and creating a more equitable sector within philanthropy. And so what we progress and how we've continued to, to change and develop, what we've continuing to do, we still are doing all of these core functions that we started with the programs are, but what we're also doing now is that we're starting to redefine what leadership is, where what it means to be a leader in philanthropy and how you can take your own leadership action at the different points of your own leadership journey that you're in. We're also learning how to cultivate this virtual, uh, cultivate this experience in our virtual communities. As many of you have seen and felt it during the pandemic, we had to shift the way we did things within our organizations. And here at Career Pathways, we're really embracing this and trying to support leaders and how we can be great leaders in the environments that we're in now. And we also wanna encourage and continue to push ourselves to lean into the discomfort. All of us have different challenges and obstacles that we may be personally facing within our organizations or as a, as a sector at large. And we wanna encourage our leaders within our program to lean into that discomfort and push ourselves to be the leaders that, that we need and that we see and that we hope to be in the sector. So what is Career Pathways? I like to use this what we are and what we aren't reference so it could help you get a better sense of what makes us different from other people from other or programs traditionally a leadership training or program you know is about teaching you how to be a leader however for us we don't want to tell you we're not going to give you a formula or a checklist of the things that you need to be to be a leader what we create at career pathways is we want to give you an, a space for you to explore the leader that you want to be we believe that it is already there and that we see it inside and we see it within you and that's why we select you to be part of career pathways and so we're not going to give you a formalized uh, a, um, set formula to be to be a leader what we really want to encourage you is for you to help discover that within yourself 
we expect leaders that are joining within career pathways to have a deeper level of equity and to come in. So we're not really here to teach you about equity or to give you a one-on-one -on -one course around there. What we want to do here is we want to help you to develop the awareness and the empowerment of your own lived experiences and identity so you can see how those lived I, I lived experiences and those identities that you hold close to you are a strength that are part of your leadership identity. And what, what we're not going to do as well is we're not going to teach you how to fix philanthropy or how to fix the sector. What we hope to do and we believe strongly here at the council is that the knowledge and the, the wealth of knowledge is within all of you as leaders of the sector. And so what we want to do is in community talk about how we can work together to develop strategies and solutions for the institution, for the sector, and for the leadership that you want to see. So all of that goes into our goals and what we are trying to do with Career Pathways. Our first goal is our mission is to try to help to advance your leadership journey. If you're applying to this program, it means that you're someone that is looking to advance in your leadership journey. That could be to a CEO position or a VP position depending on what your interests are. And so we want to help and we hope that this program will help you to advance closer to that by building the skills and muscles that you need to be able to get to those areas and that those skills and muscles are really embedded in the equity practices that we hope to instill in the sector. Our second goal is built is working around building a trusted network, as you may have seen and maybe why you're on this call today is because we have an incredible number of leadership of executive leaders part of our alumni network and a huge part of what we value of our executive leadership network is the trust that we want to build within. Many of the cohort members that graduate from the program have said that this cohort and this group of people are their go-to people when they're trying to address a challenge or that they need someone to count on. We hope that this group of people can help be, be the support system that you need to advance yourself in your career when you're at those levels. We also under we also want this program to help you to better understand the executive search process. It's hard to get there if you don't know how, right? And so what we do throughout our program is we bring in executive search firms to talk to you one on one and to share what it's like going through the experience and helping you give support network um, and uh, tips on how you can approach these applications, these interviews, and hear from other leaders that have gone through the executive search process. And the lastly, but not the least, is that we're really focusing here on how we can equip leaders to better leverage their power to advance equity. We all know that we all hold some sort of powers, and especially as leaders within philanthropy, we hold power that can really help to advance the sector. And so we want to help you to help discover how to use those vulnerabilities, that knowledge, and owning that authentic leadership so we can really use that power once we're in leadership to advance equity within philanthropy. All right, so here's a small video I want to share with you around the Career Pathways program. The future of philanthropy requires innovation and new thought and energy and career pathways is important for cultivating the future generation of leaders to do that. The way it is actually structured is we have four cohorts. We meet them four times during the year. So each time you learn more, you, you know, build on the friendships you build during the last time. It's given me an opportunity to really get to know a group of colleagues who have challenged me in ways that I hadn't had a chance to think before. These are people that I will have in my life for a very long time. The council has really succeeded is by putting together a group of really talented individuals, really great people, incredible speakers, top-notch executive coaches, thought leaders from the nonprofit world. They create an environment and a space for self-reflection, professional growth that is unlike any experience that I've had before. Career Pathways is important because 
It invests in the future leadership of the philanthropic sphere, specifically those of us who might come from diverse backgrounds and might not have had access to the networks, the learnings, or even the rules of philanthropy. And it helps philanthropy live out one of its values, which I believe is to help achieve more equitable societies. Career Pathways has been a great experience. I've learned a lot and probably even more importantly gotten to know some great people and learn from and with the group. It's a great way to tap into philanthropy at large and to connect with like-minded people. Inherently by design what we do in philanthropy is about a problem. So you know the program really helps us to be hopeful messengers, be good visionaries of a, a better world. The overall experience is fun and challenging. It's rigorous. It's the real thing. I've been growing tremendously through career pathways and always imaginable. I've really enjoyed it. I've met some really wonderful people and the panelists and the faculty and the COF staff have all been really phenomenal and great. I really just enjoy the camaraderie that I feel when I come here. So you heard a bit about our great program, and I also wanted to share with you some quotes at the end of our last spring cohort that we graduated just now in July 2020. We had a survey that went out where anonymous our participants were able to share anonymous feedback about their experience, and we were just absolutely thrilled to hear from the great experience that they were able to have in our virtual program. And so I just wanted to share a few of those with all of you. Someone said, thank you so much for this life-changing experience. This isn't just the best virtual development program I've done, but it is the best program I've done, period. Kudos to the staff and volunteers for making this so fulfilling. And there's a few others. All right, so what makes this program so special and what can you expect about this program? So I'm going to get into a little bit more details around that. So the career pathways journey. So we bring in a couple of different elements of the career pathways journey and that we're excited to incorporate into our 2023 program as well. The biggest part that you have probably seen and heard about is our educational program components and these are our live sessions i'll go into a bit of those in a moment but these are our multi-day learning sessions that will provide you with more of an in-depth and collaborative learning experience as participants this is when you'll get together with participants you'll hear from speakers and participants and share and learn more about these leadership muscles that we're encouraging around you'll also hear you also have time outside of the class, the classroom or the Zoom room or the rooms that we're in to do more self-study. And so we provide with we provide you with a ton of different information and um, and readings and recordings. And a lot of that is required. But we also have a good amount of those that encourage that allow you to take time on your own to follow to listen and learn more about philanthropy or challenges with advancing equity. We have some personal program components that are personally some of my favorite. And so one of the special things around Career Pathways is that we have access, you'll have access to executive coaching. So within our Career Pathways, you'll have um, an executive coach that you'll be able to work on one-on-one -on -one time. And this is where you'll be able to talk about more of your individual leadership experience and what are some challenges that are maybe stopping you from being able to advance in your, in your leadership. And you'll also be able to put together a capstone. So throughout your time of the program, each participant will be required to pull together a capstone project. And in this capstone, what we'll be asking you to do is to really analyze issues within the sector or within the program that will allow you to, to analyze what are some of the problems and challenges you want to advance within philanthropy. 
we also have program community program components. So something that we are very excited to introduce in 2022 is what we call our mentorship circles. Our mentorship circles are a group of alumni that have volunteered to work with you in small informal sessions. And this is a great opportunity for you to work with our Career Pathways alumni network and talk to them, get mentorship on what it is that you may be wanting to address or challenge or some support that you've been looking at throughout your program. You all have also have access to the Philanthropy Exchange Network, which is our, career, our Council on Foundations membership portal. This is where most members of the council are, are able to connect, uh, build community, and answer different questions to one another. And as Career Pathways folks, you'll have access to this, this platform. And last but not least is we incorporated a lot of components around wellness. We believe as leaders that it's important for you to be able to take care of your full self as a leader. And that means how we can also encourage our staff to take care of ourselves. So we bring in a couple different wellness components in our live sessions and as resources for you to think about how you can incorporate this into your leadership style method. I'll also like to share on the website, you'll have access to a nine month and five month uh, comparison chart that you'll be able to see how these different components vary within the different programs that you'll have access to in 2023, which I'll get into. So a bit of what I was sharing with our live session. So what to expect for you. So we have uh, live sessions every month, depending if you're doing the five month program or the nine month program. And these live sessions all have a different theme. And so it's a journey that builds off of each other. And so the first session is our welcome session where we're really focusing on helping you get ready and set yourself up for success for the next few months together. And so this is where you'll meet virtually with your cohort and the council staff and you'll learn about about getting all the resources and the tools together for you to be able to participate in the program. Then we go into learning session one. And in learning session one is when you start working on your individual leadership. This is when we start giving you time to think about who are you as a leader? What do you believe in? What do you value? How can you build in, in your story of, of who you are into your leadership strategy? Then we move into leadership learning session two, and this is when we start going out and we start looking at the entire sector. And this is when you start, we start working in peer, in peer learning groups to talk about what are some of the issues and challenges that is facing philanthropy as a whole. As leaders of this sector, how can we build awareness and expertise around facing and, and finding solutions for some of these challenges? You also have the opportunity to share your vision statement with philanthropic leaders and of your peers within the sector. After learning session three and learning and after learning session two in learning session three, you'll have access to working to learning about what it what we like to call your first 100 days as a CEO. If you were to be a CEO, what would you need to know? And how would you need to work with all the different areas of an institution? And so this is when we start working on organizational leadership and you can learn about all the different functions within an organization and how it's important to, and what's important to learn about all of that. And you continue to build your expertise around executive leadership. And last but not least is our leadership, our last learning session four. And this is where you'll be able to present your capstone that we spoke about and celebrate and come together with your fellow co cohort members and peers. All right, so what's so what should you expect for 2023? So in 2023, we're very excited for the council and for all of you is that we'll be coming back in person for some of our sessions for Career Pathways. And so what you'll notice is next year, you'll have access to be able to apply to one of two programs. We have our nine month program, which is a 
a little, which is longer, you'll have, uh, you'll be able to come together in person for two sessions. So it, during learning session one, we'll be meeting in, in DC. And, and then this, this program, I would say you'll see on the website, but this program is really geared towards folks that um, need that function and ha would like a little bit more time to really be able to absorb all the information. If you're someone that, you know, you're a learner who needs a bit more time to be able to, to work together and, and you and work on the capstone, then this program may be for you. For our learning session five, I mean, our uh, five month program, this is gonna be a shorter term program that you'll have access to in our mostly virtual environment. And we'll be coming together in learning session four in Denver to do your capstone and your celebrations. The big thing I would like to know is that our programmatic and the work and and the learning session journey, journey that I shared with you is going to be the same. What the difference that you're going to see here is that we encourage you to really think about what is your learning style? How do you learn best and what do you, where do you function the best in these environments and these types of programs? And that could help you decide if these programs are best, which of these programs may be best for you. It's really important that we know that all our learning sessions and these live sessions are all attendance required. So if you're looking to apply and you're trying to decide as well as which one is best for me, if you already know that one of these session times or dates do not work for you, then I encourage you to apply to the other one because attendance is required for you to be able to apply and join this program. We also wanna share the cost of the program. And so the nine month program is for council members, 55,650 55, and non-members, 7,750. And for our five month program, it's 4,600 for council members and for non-members, uh, 6,550. And so what, what does it take to apply and what do you need to have in order to apply for this program? So we are looking for employees that are part of a grant-making organization, a foundation, or a philanthropic institution. If you work for a nonprofit and you're unsure if that's qualified as a grant-making organization, um, please check and see if you do formal grant-making and if you're known as a, a formal grant-making organization, then those are the employees that we're looking for. We um, encourage folks that have at least five to seven years of experience within philanthropy or within your, your professional experience. So we're looking for someone that's really at that mid to senior level. What we like to say is folks that are about two to three years from either being a CEO or a, a VP, depending on how your organization functions. What's really important for us within philanthropy, within career pathways, is that the people that are applying have serious interest in wanting to be a senior or executive within their within their institution, and that are looking to advance their career within philanthropy. So, if you're someone that is looking to become a, a leader but not within philanthropy, then this program may not be for you. And the most important thing that you'll see is that getting the support of your institution is really, really important for this application and for you to be eligible. So I'll get into that in just a bit. So the application process. So the application process is in a couple of steps. The first, as I mentioned, is you speaking to a CEO or an executive within your institution. Then once you've spoken to them, then working through your application and submitting your application by Friday, October 7th. I'm gonna talk a bit about the scholarship opportunity for folks that may need some more financial support that will be due on October 14th. And then we also have alumni interviews. Not everyone receives an alumni interview, but if you do, that is the final step of the application process before you are notified and have to submit your payments. So, part of the CEO executive leadership nomination. So each organization can nominate up to two participants 
her organization. And so will we ask if you're an HR or an executive on this call trying to learn if this is a great opportunity for your employees, or if you're an applicant and want to employ, the most important thing here is that you speak to leaders within your institution to see who else is applying. Because if more than two people, applicants apply from the same institution, then we won't accept the applications because we expect the organization to nominate the person that they feel is right that wants they want to represent their institution and we are accepting two applicants in the next year because we have two different programs so those two applicants each do need to identify which program they want to apply to not both of those applicants cannot apply for the same program. For example, if me and my colleague Caroline both want to do career pathways, we would need to decide amongst each other who is right for the five month program and who is right for the nine month program. And I would maybe apply for the nine month program and then Caroline would apply for the five month program. And then with the nomination, part of your application, as I shared, is your recommendation letter. And so you'll need to make sure that you have a recommendation from either your CEO or an executive within your institution showing that they have that they have you have their support in order to participate in the program. As you see, the course load and the program is quite rigorous. And so we want to make sure that your institution is fully in support of you making this a priority for the five or the nine months that you're with us. And seeing a question, if we apply for one cohort, say the nine month program, will we be considered for participation in the other cohort? That's a great question. And so this so that's going to be dependent if you have someone else in your organization applying for the five month program. If you just have one participant joining from the program, um, applying for the nine month program, and you um, don't have someone for the five month program, then yes, you may be considered, but it all is going to depend on how many people applied. And when we're doing the culmination of the cohort, that we really take in the full group and we really see how the entire group is going to come together. So it, there's a few factors to how we decide um, who, who gets accepted into the program. So a bit information about the applications. And so you may have already seen on the website, part of your application, you'll be asked to answer application questions that give us a better scope of who you are. You'll have to submit a resume and um, you'll have to submit a recommendation letter as we shared from a CEO or, or an executive. So applicate interviews, for that second phase of the application process are around at the end of October. And then all application notices will be shared in late November. And the Waldman Scholarship. So we are very, very thrilled that we have been able to partner with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation on putting together the David Waldman Scholarship. So David Waldman was a HR professional within RWJF, and he was a huge supporter and passionate about career pathways. He supported us for many, many years. And in honor of his life, we wanted to put together this scholarship to help other marginalized leaders of, for, in the sector that wanted to participate in philanthropy to be able to help them to do so. And so we created this scholarship that is able to help with either partial or full, depending on your application. And we, it's really geared toward, or we really in, highly encourage applicants who identify, who self-identify as Black, Indigenous, or as people of color, in and Latinx, Asian, or mixed race. If you're a transgender or gender non-conforming, in the LGBTQAI community. And what I like to make sure that everyone is aware of is that this is a separate application. And so it's just a few other questions that you'll have to submit alongside your program application. And that application is opening up at the end of this week on September 9th, and you'll have until October 14th to submit that application. 
All right, so I shared a lot. <laughs> I did answer one question that came in the chat, but I did wanna give room if there are other questions that come in. So I'm just gonna open up here. I see one question came in. Thanks for this is helpful information session. You just mentioned the capstone. Will you please provide an example with more specific of what the capstone looks like? Yep, and I see we have another question about the capstone. Absolutely, so the capstone is a culmination project that you'll be working on throughout the program. So we have had uh, participants and leaders work on all different types of projects throughout their program. So the, pro the capstone can entail maybe a project that you've been working on. For example, this past cohort, we just had someone that had been working on creating a DEI learning strategy with their board of directors. And they were really trying to advance the, um, the commitment of equity within their organization with their board of directors. And so they spoke to us about their process of what it took to start the program, to start the project, what were some obstacles and challenges that they were seeing there within the program, and how they can start, and then what are some of the outcomes that they're starting to see. And so the capstone really is an opportunity for you to be able to showcase some of your strategies, ideas, projects that you've been either working on or have been wanting to work on with other leaders in the sector. And then we hope that the journey of career pathways helps you to form some of that development in your capstone so and you'll have lots of support throughout the program that will allow you but this capstone really our hope is that ends up being a great a part of your portfolio that you can bring to either an application or back to your institution to show the work that you've been working on throughout career pathways all right I see another question. Can you please repeat the details on the years of experience, five to seven years of overall career experience or five to seven years of management experience? So thank you for that question. So it is five to seven years of management experience that we're expecting. We are expecting folks to be at a uh, mid to senior level of development within their organization. Um, all, you know, a lot of this is, um, these are all different factors that we take into your application, but we do hope that it's uh, as an applicant that you do have that level of experience uh, of management and really being able to understand um, what it what it's like to be at that level within your institution. All right, another question we have is for the scholarship, if your institution is helping to pay for the program has is how is that taken into consideration? And what is the estimated cost of the travel lodge for in-person and meeting, or is that included in the program costs? That's a great question. So for the travel and lodging costs, those estimates are available on the website. It does depend on the city. And so we just give a slight estimate of what that could entail. Those travel and meeting costs are not included in the program. And so we that would be out of pocket. and the scholarship only pays for the institution, for the actual program and the curriculum and the program costs. So even if you do get a full scholarship, you would still need the support personally or of your institution to pay for the travel and um, and the other lodging costs as well. So that's a great question. And then in terms of how we consider if your institution is helping to pay to pay for it and how that's being into consideration that is something that we consider we look at your institution and um the what's what you're willing to do and you're able to explain that in their institution of how uh, what how you're able to get what why you need the support excuse me financially and so that is we take all of that into consideration of who most needs the, the support with the, with the limited scholarships that we have. All right, how does this experience have to be, does this experience have to be with your current organizations? So what we say is that we do want and we do require applicants 
to be employees of an institution. So if you're in transition or maybe not at an institution at the moment, then this program may not be for you because it is grounded in your institution. Um, however, if you're in an institution and you're trying to decide if you're looking within your institution or if you're trying to find a place out, uh, outside within philanthropy but at another institution, then you can still apply. I think it's just important for you to know that um, that a lot of the work that we do is grounded on the institution. Uh, but I think the program that we've developed now is more flexible to different leadership journeys and that allows for that. And so we have seen a lot of transition of people within the program as they're going through the program, change jobs or shortly after change positions because this program has really allowed for them to really take that into consideration and give that time back to them to be able to do that. And so I would, it, it really is on a case by case basis. If you wanna chat and talk about if this is the best fit for you right now, I'm happy to do so. Uh, but I would just think about that um, as you're applying. Well, thank you for your question. How do you define management experience? Does it does it relate to managing people? Yeah, I think it. What I would, yes, that's a great question. But with management experience, and that's why I'm saying, um, you know, we do put a number on it because it helps some people to better understand where they are. However, we also look at the full person and the full applicant. And if you're maybe someone who doesn't have that seven years of management experience, but has really had a lot of deep lived experience that has shown that you are ready, you know, it doesn't matter um, if you maybe are younger, but you are ready to be a CEO tomorrow and you're excited about that. And that's something that you're passionate about, then we're not gonna turn you away. But we more are really trying to see it's to better understand is have you taken the time to better understand and work with other organizations and work with other institute um, other members within your institution to see what it takes for you to be at that level within your institution all right i'm just checking the chat the man, your management experience does not have to be within your current institution. If you um, have been in a management position within multiple institutions and joint, and then are applying, then then we look at all of that. We also, I will say, we've had sometimes people that are joining at maybe have had numerous amounts of experience of management experience, but are new to philanthropy. Um, I would. I would encourage those applicants to really think if this is the right time for this program. Um, and I'm happy to talk with you about that. But because I say that because we have a lot of conversations about the philanthropic sector. And so we do encourage applicants to have that expertise of what it's like to be a philanthropic leader. And so if you are new to philanthropy and still getting adjusted to the, and learning about this sector, it may be worthwhile to have a, another year for you to get adjusted to learning about philanthropy before applying to career pathways. All right, looking here. The types of questions that we need to answer for the Waldman scholarships, it's really more just a few more questions that we ask about, you know, why you may need this financial support right now. So we can really be sure to provide the scholarships to the folks that mostly that um, most need it in the moment and gives us a better sense of the institutional support that you're getting financially uh, to be able to make that decision as well. So we have the amount of hours, um, expected hours within the, the program and the homework. And so how much time that is committed to the program on the website. I don't want to give you the wrong number. And so um, my colleague Caroline can send you that link and you should be able to access there. Uh, what I say is our learning sessions, our virtual learning sessions, which depending on which of the program you are applying to, those, the 
the Wednesday to Friday sessions, those usually go from about noon to 5 p.m. PM Eastern time every day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And so, for example, if you're doing the five month program, that's every month. Um, and we have that one month off in November. But if you're doing a live, if you're joining the, the nine month program, for example, and some of those sessions are in person, those days are a bit longer. So those would be a two and a half days from a 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And so it is still quite a commitment, which is why it's important that, you know, when you're applying to really think if this is the right time for you and how you're able to fit that in into your schedule and into your time. And also why we really encourage you to have honest conversations with your institutions about the support that they're providing to you. This is as much a commitment that you're giving to yourself, as well as a commitment that the institution is giving to you and their own organization by investing in you. And that investment in you isn't just monetary with financing the program, but also by giving you the time to really be present at the, at the sessions and to not book meetings during that time and to give you time to supporting you on your capstone and everything else that's needed. I just want to check time. Yep. Great. Can we, can you speak a bit more to your audience bit more to your audience for this program administration administrators versus those in leading programmatic work that's a great question and so there's not specific folks um in terms of that were that need to apply i think what we like to say is the, the main target audience for this program are folks that want to become CEOs and executives within their institutions. And so if you, you know, are a pro in programmatic or in finance or in legal or in HR, we've had all of those leaders apply and participate in those programs. And because all of them could see themselves in that executive leadership or CEO position one day. However, if you're someone that is in a legal position, but just doesn't really see themselves advancing uh, past, you know, a mid a managerial position, then this program may not be for you because it's really for folks that doesn't matter what area of the institution they are, but are really looking to advance to be an executive within their institution. Um, it says, will the program require time away from work? I understand the workload, but I want to know if I need time off. The time off is, um, you will need time off. It just depends how your organization sees it. You, those days, those live calls are during the workday. So you will have to ask for those afternoons. Um, but again, those are investment that the organization is making in, in your training. And so uh, depending on how your institution sees it, it shouldn't be time off, but it could just depend on, on the way that your institution sees you investing in, in the training. I'm just reading here. Um, in terms of who receives alumni interviews, we have it, it really it is dependent. We are we receive we give alumni interviews with folks that maybe we want to get to know a bit more that we want to better understand their application. Um, sometimes we give everyone an interview. Sometimes we give a few folks an alumni interview. But it really is just um, another form for us to better get to know you and see if this is the right time for you to apply for this program. All right, so this seems to be the last question. I'm doing another round of checks on here. Caroline, do you see anyone with their hand raised? I do not, I do not, but I'll remind anyone if you come up with a question later today, you can always submit them at any time to educate at cof.org. I keep track of that inbox and I'll make sure that we answer your question. Yes, absolutely. If you want to connect with an alumni and um, better get a sense of their experience, then I highly encourage you uh, to let us know and we can connect you with an alumni for you to be able to answer and, and learn more about their experience. 
Thank you all so, so much. Before you hop off, I do just wanna share, um, we have some incredible upcoming learning opportunities. So if you do wanna connect with alumni and learn about the work that she's that they're doing in the sector, we actually have an alumni uh, spotlight coming up on September 20th at 3.30 Eastern time. We have a wonderful alumni who's gonna speak about how knowledge work has played a huge role in today's philanthropy and how we should be focusing equity into our knowledge work within the sector. And so I'm very excited for you to hopefully learn. So I encourage you to join us on September 20th for this session. And then we also host office hours um, throughout the time up until the application. So we'll be hosting two formal ones on September 21st at 3 p.m. Eastern time and Wednesday, October 5th at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And so these office hours are an informal session for you to join in a, in a Zoom room with myself and you can and other colleagues here at the council. And we answer questions about your application. Um, if you know if you have any questions about the program or anything that we can do to help you. And so if you still have remaining questions, I encourage you to join us on those dates or feel free to reach out to me personally and I'm happy to have a one-on-one -on -one chat with you. So. Last reminder, applications are due for the for the whole program on Friday, October 7th. So please start talking to your CEOs and your executives about it. And if you have any questions, please let me know. But thank you very, very much for all your for joining me today on this call. And I look forward to reading and connecting to reading your applications and to meeting and seeing all of you. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Manuela. Thank you, everyone. And we'll send you an email when this recording is available so you can send it to your executive leaders. Bye-bye. Thank you.